Hello fellow quarantinis! I'm coming to you from south of France. I hope you guys are all doing well. I hope you're staying safe and sane and productive and positive, all of those things. <laughs> this week I, well I didn't sit down this week with her, it was several weeks ago before all the pandemic was worldwide. <laughs> but I sat down with Kathleen Gates, she is a player in Chamelier. She's American and she's been over here for several years so she has lots and lots of experience playing professional volleyball. And we actually chatted for about 30 minutes so it took me a while to cut this interview down to bite-sized portion, but lots of valuable information and I hope you guys enjoy the video. <laughs> I'm here with Kathleen Gates. She is a professional volleyball player here in Europe, as we all are. How many years have you been playing? I've been playing overseas since 2013, so going on seven years seven abroad. Years. I'm a setter, I'm from North Carolina, I played volleyball at the University of Georgia, go dogs. You've played only in France. Mm -hmm. And you Sometimes. speak French perfectly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not perfectly, I have a really good American accent when well, I speak. It's very strong. Well, it's but, fluently. Yeah, yeah, okay. yes. <laughs> but that I makes a huge it. difference. I think yeah. a, mm. if someone is going to come over here and live in Europe, making mm. the effort to learn the language makes a huge mm -hmm. difference to your experience in the place. What do you think is the best part about playing pro? 100% the relationships, because there's people I've never been um, exposed to and culture I've never experienced. Even this year we have, I think, over four or five different nationalities. So you have people coming from Northern Africa, people coming from way Eastern Europe, people coming from Brazil, and so just different continents even. And so just having that all at once, because growing in the South is pretty uniform and um, you know, make an effort if you want to meet people from different cultures. But here yeah. it just, just comes so naturally and also just so interesting and you get a different perspective and it's really refreshing. So that's definitely a tip to take away if anyone's coming <laughs> over to the, from the US or just throw yourself into the culture and just mm -hmm. soak it all up because it's definitely an experience that not a lot of people would have I wouldn't say. No it's very character building though it was not all like <laughs> sunshine and like it took me a while to like break out of my shell but so once you do that and it just it's really really rewarding. How do you deal with being far from home? Uh, thankfully I have friends and family that are very understanding and so making the effort to text and call and FaceTime so at least with my parents we always had like a, a Sunday afternoon evening my time um, to FaceTime with both mm -hmm. of them having that set time and then my sister and I just stay in contact all the time through texting and Instagram and memes all that kind of stuff but <laughs> Memes. I love how you throw memes in there. <laughs> we stay in contact yeah. via memes. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Who is your volleyball idol? For me, it's a setter watching uh, the men's national team setter for France, Benjamin Tunuti. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a, a mastermind. He's not that big of a player, but the way he's able to work with his teammates and to create this game like that they play together at France is really incredible. Yeah, I like that you said that you watch men's volleyball as well because it is almost two different games. It's just a different style, like just how yeah. like, free they play, and, like fluid, and they're not really just like set and rigid. They're really able to um, adapt and make cool plays and just like just have, have a lot of fun too. Like you watch them, like a lot of times they're laughing and joking and yeah. just really living it up. And then I think sometimes, at least for me, I don't have an issue with just like letting go and having fun. But seeing them is really encouraging because they're playing at a very high level and very intense and also it's important matches. But they're able to play with such freedom that it's really inspiring. Do you have any tips for mental preparation? The mental game is so important because you have so many different things that could be stressful to you. But right before the match, I think, is really important to have like a 15-minute routine. So for me, it's working on breathing. Because you can yeah. tell I'm someone that um, I get excited to speak really fast and really quickly. <laughs> no, we can thing. tell, we can tell. <laughs> and that's the same thing with like, over, I don't need someone to hype me up. I need, I need to right. calm down. You need to just find your center like, and so, a little bit. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. So I've worked with a couple of different mental coaches. Um, so doing breathing exercises and mm -hmm. listening to music and then visualization, just thinking about what the certain things I want to do um, uh, during that match and I think about those and I'm ready to go. Do you have any tips for setters? I think it's just, it just comes down to relationships again and mm -hmm. just realizing how you communicate with your teammates who you're working with on the court but also with your coach who's also someone that's going to help you lead you um, running the offense and just watching a lot of volleyball and just seeing different styles and then once you find a setter or someone that you like then you just do, watch how they do it and maybe even like reach out to them and ask them how they, they train. Earlier in my career I was someone that was just crazy about getting reps and doing footwork. Right. I've interviewed a, a few setters now and they all have said yes footwork, footwork, mm -hmm. footwork, getting underneath the ball, getting your hands to the ball is the first and most important thing. But I think that's also important what you said about watching other setters. Mm -hmm. Don't just rely on your coach giving you all the information. Go out there and just watch. Just watch as much yeah, volleyball as humanly possible because that's 
how humans learn. And people are so fortunate now because they have things like back at home and there's flow volleyball, there's also Euro volleyball, so you can watch all this really high level volleyball, which growing up like in the early 2000s, like what's yeah, really an option? Yeah, we're not talking about when we, yeah, when we grew like, up. Uh, we, <laughs> didn't have memes. V, yeah, VHSs. <laughs> it's, it's easier than ever to get information and mm -hmm. that's, uh, that's what we're doing here. That's yeah. exactly what we're doing. We're trying to just spread information about volleyball and pro volleyball life. So I hope you appreciate it. Yes, everyone. <laughs> Do you have any tips for young Americans coming overseas to play in Europe? I think that if you're coming over to Europe, then you probably went through the college recruiting process. And I think you kind of need to treat it like that because you're uprooting your life, you're moving over to a club, and I think the first thing you have to realize is that you're working for this club. Mm -hmm. So the expectation that you're here to play volleyball, to do things with the club, to be like their their face for the community, and so that's really what you're there for. And then all the cool stuff like traveling and um, going out to eat and all this stuff is like just extra. Yeah. And so I think, because then once you do that, once you establish yourself as someone that's serious, then everyone on your team has a lot of respect for you and you're able to do the fun stuff. You can reach out to people that have lived in those countries because some countries are easier than others, I think, to adjust to. Within the team, most people will speak English, mm -hmm. but yeah, exactly. Playing as soon as you go outside of that, as soon as you go to the bakery down the street, as mm -hmm. soon as you go to the supermarket, you're going to want to have a basic understanding of the language to feel comfortable, to feel at home. I'm going to give you a couple of rapid fire questions. Oh, okay. Here we go. I didn't, yeah. I didn't prep for it with no. this one, so it's, it's going to be <laughs> off the cuff. Okay. Fruit or vegetables? Uh, vegetables. Mac or PC? Mac. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Always. They got me good. That was a stupid question. Everything. <laughs> I know. I like, blah, blah, blah. Yes. Uh, ice cream or chocolate? Ice cream. Cardio or abs? Ooh, cardio. Dancing or singing? Dancing. I'm a horrible singer, but I, can, I love dancing. Like, just even when there's like a time, like in between like yeah. breaks, I just start. I'm not very good at dancing either, but I enjoy it better. Now I'm going to be singing. looking out for it on the court. If yeah. I see like just doing a little boogie, a little, in little side sets. shuffle. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm waiting for the next thing to happen. I'm just like bobbing along. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Well, that is it for my questions. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a great day. See Thanks. you on the court. Yeah. <laughs> Have a great day. Thanks for watching, guys. As always, if you have anything you want to shout, out to me if you want to send me some positive vibes, if you want to ask me a question, if you want to recommend somebody I should get an interview with, I'll probably have to do it over FaceTime or something. But leave that in the comments, send me a DM on Instagram, anything you want. I am literally hanging out, making videos. I would welcome any distraction. Hope you guys are well. Oh yeah, don't subscribe because I don't want you knowing. I don't want anyone to know when I'm putting up new videos because it's, like, it's, real, it's a real exclusive club, you know, so don't do that. Goodbye.